I'd like to call the meeting of the All Wards MPA to order. Get a motion to adopt the agenda. Is there a second? Thank you. Our agenda has been adopted. Uh, we're going to move into welcome and introductions. Uh, I'll start. My name is Chris Hazley. I'm on the steering committee for Ward 3. Uh, I live on College Street and uh, I've been on the MPA now for about three years. Go right. Finished mm. chewing. Hi, hi, everybody. I'm Jess Hyman. I'm on the Ward 2 NPA Steering Committee, and I've been on the Steering Committee for about four years, I think. Uh, Ryan Nick, uh, Ward 8 Steering Committee member, been on the Steering Committee for about six weeks. Uh, pronouns are he, him, and I live on King Street. I'm Lena, they, them, and I'm on the Ward 5 Steering Committee. I have been on that committee for about a year. I'm Molly Flanagan. I'm on the Ward 2 Steering Committee. She, her, and I've been on for about three and a half years. I'm Jonathan Chattisokal, he, him. I'm on the Ward 1 Steering Committee. And I think I probably got on about a year before you did to Ward 1. So. Mm -hmm. Ward <clears throat> I'm Carol Livingston. Um, she, her, and I um, have been on the Ward 1 Steering Committee probably, I don't know, five or six years? I think it's been that long. Right. Anyway. Uh, Samantha Ayotte, uh, Ward 1 Steering Committee, about almost a year. I don't remember when I, when I had jumped on. Um, and uh, pronouns are she, her. Um, Good evening, everybody. Uh, Scott Rogers, he, him. I'm a community development manager uh, with CEDO, and I'm here um, as administrative support to the MPAs. Hi, Fosca. Um, she, her pronouns. I also work for CEDO as the NPA public engagement specialist. Okay, we'll do introductions for our folks who are joining us online via Zoom. I'm on the Ward 6 Steering Committee and have been for about uh, two and a half years, and I use she and her pronouns. Hi, my name is Nancy Harkins. Um, I, I wasn't able to change my name on my screen, resume screen. Uh, I'm also on the Ward 6 Steering Committee for about two and a half years. I live uh, on Hooper Street. My name is Hank Brensky, I'm on the brand new reconstituted NPA of wards four and seven. So I've been on for about six minutes. <laughs> I'm a him on Apple Three Point Lane, not Apple Three Point Pro. Hi everyone, I am Lauren Ebersaw. I'm on the Ward 2 Steering Committee. I use she, her pronouns, and I have been on this steering committee for about six months, and I previously served on the White Ward 8 Steering Committee before that. Hi, I'm Carmen George. I am on the Ward 4 7 Steering Committee with Hank and Sarah. And yeah, just we haven't even had our first meeting yet, so fresh out of fresh into the scene. Um, yeah, and I, my pronouns are she, her. Hey. Um, I'm Sarah Diaz, um, I'm a community, I'm myself in Ward 7, I live on North Ave, um, and also real fresh, um, I use she and they pronounce. Is there anybody else online who would like to introduce themselves? We got everybody. I'm Chris Pryor Talker, I live in Ward 3, chairman of the Burlington Republican Party. Thanks for having me. I can pop on real quick. I'm Rebecca Lawrence Gomez. I also work with CEDO and I'll be presenting and speaking with you all in probably about 10, 20, 30 minutes, depending on how the agenda goes. I use her, she, her pronouns, and I'll just be talking about um, a plan that the city is working on for which we're looking for feedback. Hi, 
this is Todd DeLuca. I'm from Ward 4, and I'm just here to listen. Um, I'm Michelle Borbus. I'm on Ward 3, and I've been on oh, four months. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to introduce yourselves. <clears throat> Quick announcement here that the de-escalation training for interested steering committee members will be held on January the 30th uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, right here in the Sharon Busher Conference Room, if anyone is interested in that. Okay. Uh, next up on the agenda, the NPA input on the con plan. Uh, Rebecca Lawrence Gomez here will be play, uh, presenting on that. Uh, she's our housing manager from CEDO. Uh, so without further ado, it's all you, Rebecca. Rebecca, are you available? Are we having technical difficulties? Hi, Rebecca. Um, we're ready for your presentation. <coughs> um, since Rebecca seems to be temporarily unavailable, maybe we should move on to the next item on the agenda, perhaps. Uh, and that will be an uh, overview of the bylaw work expectations and updates. I assume Scott and or Fosca you'll be pre presenting on those items. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, mainly, we just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page about this. Um, the City Council uh, passed a resolution on October 23rd, I believe, um, asking that the NPAs do some work to make the NPAs more open and accessible. And they have asked that the NPAs do so by January 31st, 2024, or as soon as possible. Um, so this is just a reminder about that. And basically, I think last all words meeting, it was kind of, it was unclear, you know, whether the city would be coming forward with bylaws for you to use or vice versa. Um, and so we just had an update that uh, I believe you were all emailed about this as well, but just to reiterate that you're, you all are welcome to make changes to your bylaws. Um, Scott put together some sample bylaws that were working with the city attorney's office to um, make better and um, you're welcome to create changes to those bylaws vote them in and then um, you're all we, we suggest that then the city attorney's office take a look at them to ensure um, that they adhere with uh, city policies on anti-discrimination and um, inclusion um, I don't know Scott if you want to say anything else <coughs> Yeah, thank, thank you, Fosca. So we had a meeting earlier uh, with the city attorney's office, and they did give us some, some I think, really excellent feedback. Um, obviously, as MPAs, you're, you're in control of your own process on how you want to update your bylaws. Um, certainly, there are things, I think, that um, <clears throat> through the city resolution that they would like to be included. Um, but we did want to open it up today to, I think, get an idea of where uh, the various wards are uh, in the process of updating their bylaws, um, if there's additional guidance that um, we can provide. Um, and we will provide additional guidance in, with some of the feedback that we've received from the city's attorney's office. Um, we're certainly very thankful for the city's attorney's office for the work they're doing on that. Um, I can let you know that REIB um, uh, is, is working very hard on the process um, should complaints or the need to potentially re remove uh, a steering committee member, um, that process is being developed. Um, I expect that we'll have some more answers on that shortly, but certainly do appreciate the hard work that REIB is doing on that. Um, that is something I think that'll be very important as you move in your process of updating your bylaws as well. Um, we will have more clear. Oh, sorry. That is racial equity, inclusion, and belonging. 
this is a Department of City Government. It is here to advise us on uh, the best ways to reach out to a diverse community uh, and different, popula different uh, populations. And um, they'll be taking a role um, uh, in this process. Um, we will have, I think, more specific information on, in a sense, a complaint process um, um, to you within poss possibly by as, as soon as Friday um, as we go through some of the materials that we've received from the city's attorney's office. Um, we're happy to answer any questions and um, hear your feedback of where you are in the process and, um, and timing, et cetera. Has their hand raised? Uh, can can you send out a copy of the city council resolution so that we can read it and make sure that we are respecting what they vote it on? It's um, it's connected to the last all wards NPA meeting uh, posting on Civic Clerk. If you have Civic Clerk handy. Um, it's one of the attachments to that meeting, if that's available for you. Okay. I, I, I sent you an email earlier. I, I'm having trouble getting in there. So. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll resend it to everybody. I think it would probably be helpful to get a fresh email. So we'll do that for you, Carmen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I have a question, Scott and Fosca. Mm -hmm. um, so the Wards 2 uh, NPA passed... Uh, uh, approved its revised bylaws this last week. When, once the RE, REIB has developed the complaint process, will that need to be inserted into the uh, bylaws and will we need to vote on them again or would that, will that information be separate from the bylaws? Um, you would need to put that process into, into your, your bylaws. So I do appreciate how fast you were to get those updated, but there'd probably be another vote uh, to add some additional information in there. Um, again, you know, we know we looked at wards two and three, and there, you, you already have some very strong bylaws, so that was, um, you know, good to see. But yeah, once we have more clarification on that process, um, with a little bit more clarification on a potential removal part process, again, I, I hope this is a process that the MPAs will never use. Um, it'll be there. There's options, you know, including removal, censure. Um, each of these processes comes with, you know, reciprocal rights for the, all the individuals involved, and we want to make sure we respect those. Um, but this information should be forthcoming. Thank you. All right, so we've heard from Ward 7 and Ward 2. We'll get an update from perhaps Ward 1. Okay, I, um, first of all, it'd be great if people in the room could speak up a little bit too. Um, <clears throat> that'd be great. Um, I guess I'm confused. I attended the last All Wards meeting, um, uh -huh. and there are a couple of things operating for me in this. One is that I think it's pretty important that we have a cons we have consistent language among the wards. That's that's what I I think. I'd be interested in hearing what other people have to say, um, and that that it's consistent with what the city has for any discriminatory, any discrimination language. <clears throat> um, my understanding from leaving the last meeting is that there were going to be folks that were going to. Um, craft some suggested language for us to take a look at. Um, so we haven't, we haven't, as Ward 1, we haven't taken this task on yet. I mean, Lena, you all had come up with, I thought, really good language. Um, we looked at it last time. Um, I'm sort of wondering what the process here is here for, we have, you know, people working on their own and then we have something coming out of CETO. Um, and to be honest, I think we're just going to sit tight till it all sort of sugars <laughs> out. Because um, we have a lot going on, and that's just, it's not number one in our attendees, to be honest. Um, it would be something that us C SC nerds would be working on. But um, and, and if I can just say, I, yeah. <clears throat> we don't really have any interest in opening up the can of worms more than once. I really appreciate that you've already done that, but it makes no sense at all. So when CEDO and REIB and everybody comes back with, you know, the, the what from column A and what from column B, then we can go and approach it. If it's and, helpful. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Scott. I, I just want to say that's great feedback, and I, I think that's a, a good course of action. Um, the uh, sample, sorry, I, I keep forgetting it doesn't project. Uh, so the, the sample that we put together, that, that's for you to use as you see fit. Um, 
you can customize things the way you feel it, it you feel works better for your the culture of your MPA. There will be some some select things that you know the city attorney's office will say pay special attention to this because we think you need to have it because there will be ultimately a, a process that we have to have the legal justification for. So it'll be important that maybe that you follow the city guidance on that very clearly. Other things are, are really up to you and, and your ward to develop as you see fit. Could, could I just make a suggestion? I mean, I think we talked about this a little bit last month that, <clears throat> that uh, the city's anti-discrimination policy should be part of of the NPAs if 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 that exists wonderful it would be great to have a, a link a clear link to it that we can just drop in and if REIB is going to do something or the city's attorney is going to do something why don't they just create some dummy links and we can just put in our bylaws we will follow policy based on the link here and just as soon as you guys are ready we'll be ready so we don't have to go and think too hard about it. If, the, if there are mandatory things that need to go in, y you should provide the links for them, and then we can just put the links in our bylaws. And we can do that. Uh, we already have, uh, and we'll and certainly ensure that you have the links to this, but the non-discrimination policy of the city, uh, the uh, uh, inclusion policy of the city, um, and certainly we'll, we'll, we'll link to everybody uh, ultimately what any sort of um, uh, a complaint process looks like or a removal process should look like and so we can get everybody that language and 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 for your award if that's the, the path you want to take I think that's um, a, a good path anybody from Ward 4 want to speak I think sorry Dale on Linus had her hand raised for a while so maybe we can have Dale speak Thanks, this is Dale from Ward 6. So we had um, used the sample that uh, was provided to develop some proposed Ward 6 bylaws that we were going to bring to our February 1st meeting. Um, but it seems a little strange to do that if there's actually more language still coming that we don't have yet. So. Um, I, it would be helpful to understand that better and also Scott I heard you say something about having the city attorney review the bylaws and, and it seems to me that we would want to do that before we bring them for a vote because it'd be kind of um, a waste of time to vote on things if we're going to hear later that they don't pass muster so um, I guess Although we have bylaws that we were set to put out uh, in February for discussion and then probably vote in March, that is the schedule that we were looking at, but it sounds like maybe we're going to want to push that back. Hi, Dale. Uh, and that, that's a great point. And, um, interesting thing that you do mention, uh, the city attorney's office has mentioned to us the idea that, um, before they're voted on, um, they can take a look at the draft. Um, and provide comments before it's voted on. So that's another um, tact you can take, and it's probably the best tact to take. So within the city, uh, the resolution city council uh, passed, it noted that the MPAs should make changes to their bylaws by the end of January 31st or as soon as practical. Um, so, you know, if, if in certain cases some wards go to the beginning of March, I think that's fine. If a ward had to call a special meeting in between that to just we're going to devote one meeting to do our bylaws and get it done. Um, I think that's fine as well. Um, and Dale, and I do apologize if I missed I, any I, questions. I'm going I'm, I'm to make a comment about that. That's something that we were concerned about. Um, I have a feeling that if we called a special meeting just to address bylaws, we would not get a quorum, which our current bylaws say is 10 people. I honestly don't think there's 10 people who would show up just to talk about bylaws. So I don't. It, maybe in other words it's different, but in Ward 6 I don't see a special meeting being an option because if we don't get a quorum, then we still can't vote. Uh, th thank you, Dale. And yeah, I, I would suggest following, you know your ward better than we do, and, and uh, you know, if it goes into March, um, you know, certainly that is as soon as practical. I think we'll recognize Christopher Aaron Felker and then Hank Prensky. <clears throat> thank you. I, um... I've heard a lot of talk about uh, 
sample bylaws being distributed from CEDO and the city attorney's office, but I don't see it listed um, in the agenda packet. Is there some place where that is located that I can review them? Please. Hi, Christopher. Um, I am happy to email those directly to you um, as, as soon as I can. Um, and um, I will, uh, as well as uh, I'm trying to incorporate some of the changes that have been requested by the city attorney's office. So I'll get those when they're completed as well. So I'm happy to keep that line of communication open. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I just want to add that the last version, and maybe Scott, if you wouldn't mind numbering your versions, like having something so we know, then I can say I'm using version whatever. Um, that would be helpful. Either a bad or a date on it. Um, what's your name? If, if you want to see the, the, the suggested version, if you go to uh, northburlingtonnpa.com and you go to the agenda page, uh, you go to the bylaws page, it has the current bylaws and then down below it has the last version I received from the spot. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wanted to um, comment that if you're going to incorporate several things that are uh, suggested or required by the city attorney, um, if you could have some way of labeling the different parts. Uh, you know how you fill out every goddamn thing online and there's a little app that says, this, this uh, thing is required. This is a required field. So if you would give us a, you know, a, way, a, a key to say these are the required fields that are going to be in everybody's bylaws, so don't even mess with them. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Hank. That's, uh, uh, we will make sure that that is done for everyone. So I think we've heard from all wards. Ryan, do you want to give an update on six? There's eight, excuse me. Sorry, please. Ward eight. Ward eight, sorry. <laughs> my, new, my, new, my new home. Um, I, we're we're going to have our meeting next week to discuss these. Um, it'll be on the agenda. I, not to like cause an issue or anything, like, what's the virtue of us all having different anti discrimination policies? Like, particularly around issues like this and conflict resolution, I feel like it should be consistent across the MPAs. Um, like, I don't want to move houses and have a different. I don't know, discrimination policy. Of that, that's good because I can clarify that um, as well. I, I think the expectation would be around those type of policies, non-discrimination, um, part of the process of potentially removing people, sanctions, that that would follow um, a process that's been guided to us and advised to us by, by uh, the city attorney's office. Okay. And I'll, I'll make that, when I, when I do update the, uh, the sample bylaws, I'll, I'll make the, that abundantly clear to people yeah. um, as well, just so you know, because I think Hank and I think your, your questions are, are really, really on point. Um, and then ultimately there, there are things that it's really up to you to kind of look at the culture of your MPA. And, and I think that might be one of the wonderful things about the MPAs is that they're all different. So, um, but there'll be certain things where we think there is some level of, of legal obligation or potential that, that puts the city potentially in, in, a, in a, a situation that may, may not be defensive legally. Right. We're going to want to make sure that, that that all. Okay, so we are going to have the same, pol like whatever it is, it's going to be the same across all the MPAs eventually. Yes, okay. that would be the, Great. the expectation. That's wonderful. Uh, anybody else have anything they'd like to add from the wards? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm from Ward 5. I don't think there's anyone else from 5 online. Um, you brought up that we had we had shared some language at the last all wards meeting. One of the ways that we've tried to walk the line between, I also don't see the benefit of everybody having different bylaws that are this, that, and the other. I think it would be really helpful to as someone online said, like, let's be really clear about what is the same in all of the bylaws. And then there, many of us already have bylaws, the rest of which do not need to be changed. That's fine. That allows us to like keep our character. I believe that culture is uh, broader and more robust than the language of bylaws. So I'm like, I don't really, I don't really get it, but Seen that's fine. It so. um, oh. yeah. Anyway, I, we, we had a really great discussion in Word 5 about the resolution, which we brought the, t the original text of to the last All Words meeting, and then it totally changed over the course of our discussion. So we were able to have a really good conversation as a community and really get into like why it's important that we do this, which I think is much more 
like essential to our neighborhood fabric than the words in the resolution. And then we passed it unanimously with a vote of 20 to zero. Like it was a, it was a really cool experience. And I think the bylaws process will be a little more belabored because that language is inherently less accessible. But it, if we can get really clear guidance on like X, Y, Z things are the same, the rest of it do with as you please, it, yeah. then we make sure that folks are, folks are accommodated no matter what ward they live in. Sounds good. <clears throat> and, and one more thing, Scott, if, if, if you can indicate, um, or all of us would need to indicate in our bylaws which uh, paragraphs or which issues are, are um, required by the city so that if somebody is, you know, in our wards just happens to want to look at the bylaws, it, it's clear that this is there because it's a required field. Um, and that we, we didn't decide that. So if you have problems with that, talk to Scott <laughs> and, and Tosca. Okay. Exactly. Jessica. Yeah, thank you, Hank and Lena, for those comments. And, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to, to agree with and add to what Hank just said. And I'm, I realize I'm saying this after we've approved our, our, our bylaws and, and this could, could, could mean a change. But I think st structurally it might be a lot easier if there was the standard bylaws that every ward has and that's the top part and then there's an end also and to have things that are specific to the different wards as a separate section, just because it would be really difficult, just as Hank was saying, it'd be difficult for someone reading it to know like which is the special thing for Ward Ward 2 and uh, 2 and 3 and which is a special <coughs> thing for Ward 8. So I think just in terms of clarity, it might be helpful to have to have that standard text and then the and in Ward whatever, the additional things. So for us, it would require, that, that would require a lot more work, which I don't, I'm not speaking on behalf of our steering committee right now. That's just my, my thought as, I, as I'm listening to the conversation. Thank you, Jess. And I think we can probably work up an option for that as well. Okay, any further comments on the bylaws discussion? It looks like Christopher. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. I just have a, a point of information, and, and that's for Scott. I appreciate that you said that you would send the um, the paper, the write ups from the city attorney and from Tito out. I, I just have a point of information question, just so that way we're clear. The bylaws and the procedures that you're talking about through REIB for grievance and uh, removal or censure, I'd just like to some clarification. Removal and censure of steering committee members exclusively or is this look is, are you looking to extend this to NPA or community members who are in attendance can I yeah, great, clear, great, please? yeah great question Christopher uh, Aaron, Aaron and I can um, certainly uh, clarify it to the best of my ability so um, the removal process and censure is is really focused on steering committee members should it rise um, to that occasion um, again people have to come to the realization that um, steering committee members um, as well as many people don't leave their first amendment rights at the door um, but what we've been told is that the steering committee can accept extend, extend clear expectations of 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 meeting behaviors um, that they have to universally apply to everybody, um, which some MPAs do at the beginning of every, every MPA. They'll say, respect people, listen to different opinions, don't talk over people. So those are the type of things that an MPA can put in place. Should someone continue to violate those, then there could be sanction. Um, in regard to somebody in an open meeting of the public, um, there could potentially be an option uh, in an extreme case for a person to be removed who wasn't following um, the meeting guidelines. And certainly those meeting guidelines would have to be even handedly applied to everyone attending the public meeting. You know, whether it was, you know, a religion, uh, let's say somebody was going after someone's religion or somebody was going after someone for their sexuality, making it personal. Um, as long as it's applied uh, uh, even handedly and consistently, my understanding is that a MPA could potentially ask a member of the public to leave a meeting. 
Um, they could certainly ask a member, of the, a member of the public to leave the meeting if the person was speaking beyond their time limits or in other ways um, disrupting the course of the meeting. Recognize uh, Todd DeLuca, who's had his hand up. <coughs> Todd, you're up. Sorry, uh, <clears throat> just trying to get the Zoom to work. Um, hello. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I just wanted a, a little clarity around like the uh, the issue with pronouns um, in in the bylaws because this this is what we're talking about, right? Like um, the people who use sex based pronouns, like Jeff Comstock, versus people who use. Um, self-assigned pronouns um, and whether or not how people use to choose pronouns is 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 considered uh, something that can get you kicked out of the MPA um, and so I, I was just hoping that someone would, would very specifically clarify like if you are a person who uses sex-based pronouns so you refer so what that means is I'm talking about like you would refer to a woman as she her um, and, and a man as, as he him. Um, is that is that behavior that will get you kicked out of an MPA? Um, if someone could clarify that. Hi, Todd. Um, yeah. So. I do want to say that you know I don't have a, a, a firm answer for you today. This is something that's being worked on with our REIB and the city attorney's office. Um, obviously, there'll, there'll be some legal work done on this. Um, and um, we'll get back to you with more information. Um, you know, what I can say is, you know, the rules are different for, for people who are on MPAs, who attend MPAs, and then there's rules for staff. As, as a staff member, I, I follow city um, uh, protocols on, on, um, on pronoun usage. Um, so um, we will get you more definitive information, and um, I will certainly be following up with REIB, the city's attorney's office, um, to get that clarification as soon as possible. I was just going to respond to your question, Carmen, about liability. Um, you did email me about that, and I've Jared, the, city, the acting city attorney, is looking into that right now, um, and whether that liability insurance does cover steering committee members. So, if that's specifically the question you're asking, it's in the works of getting you an answer. <laughs> um, okay, I appreciate it. I know like, my city attorney's always got talks going on, um, and you said that we don't have liability insurance. And that's something that I would, I'm going to be chatting with members of my steering committee about getting liability insurance so that we aren't at risk of being sued. 
I just want to revise that. Sorry, Carmen. Um, we're still trying to confirm whether or not um, the steering committee members of the NPAs fall under the city's uh, liability insurance. Jonathan. <clears throat> I'm going to try to make this rant a little bit short. Um, but it comes with a little history. Uh, back 20 years ago, I was on a school board in the county, and it was at a time when, when at the time, we thought there were an undue number of school shootings going on. We didn't know how bad it would get. But at the time, there was talk about putting, um, in the community, there was talk about putting metal detectors at the front doors of the schools. You may remember that this was a conversation that happened at the time. And my superintendent was adamant about not doing it because, because the metal detectors creates an environment that, that, that hurts education, that hurts learning, that hurts teaching. It changes the community when you do something like that. My concern here is that this, and I'm hearing it in this conversation, that, <clears throat> and, and I'm not saying there's not a problem. There was a problem with shooting in schools. But my concern is that we're going to create some kind of infrastructure that's going to take community, neighborhood, friendliness, um, considera consideration for each other out of the process of the NPAs because we're trying to protect a certain aspect of our community, which is what metal detectors would have done. Um, that worries me a lot. I hope that, that, I hope that after we have this conversation, we, it kind of backs away and we kind of forget that the infrastructure is in place so we don't have to worry about it anymore because it's, <clears throat> it's very disturbing to me to think that we're building these walls to protect people where what the NPA is there for is to, it's for, it's for openness, it's for accessibility, it's for belonging. And, and most of the people who come to NPA meetings, I would venture to say 95% of people who come to NPA meetings feel that, that it's about community. Um, so that's my concern. Any other further comments on this? Questions? Uh, I'll just put on the Ward 3 hat for a moment and say I really appreciate the support from the city's attorney's office and their willingness to uh, review this and work with us on, on this issue. Uh, I think that uh, as we talked about at the last meeting, there's some question about the legal status of the NPAs. and. Wishing to get a better handle on that, I actually went back and talked to a member of our community who served on the city council and actually voted on the resolution. Uh, and that individual ensured me that the intent behind the NPAs was that we were intended to be an independent voice of the community, separate uh, from the city government and not under the uh, umbrella of CETA or any other city department. So uh, I think for three, we've pretty much met the spirit of the resolution, if not the intent, and I think as evidenced by the fact that the wards two and three bylaws were used, I think, as the sample for the, the sample bylaws that came about. Um, so I think, you know, to the extent that the city is working to ask the MPAs, we'll get a lot farther, but um, I don't think that ward three sees ourselves as part of city government, so. <clears throat> uh, sure. So I, my bet is, is that when the legal language comes from the city attorney, that we should have more conversation together. Um, to just deliver language is probably not going to be hel as helpful as understanding what its implication means and to answer questions that we may have um, that Carmen has raised and other folks have raised. Thank you. That, that's a wonderful point. And, um, I, I can only make a suggestion because, you know, we're trying to get back to the role where, you know, for a certain time, CETO was, we were scheduling all boards meetings, but in reality, that should come from you to us. We're, we're, we're here is to help, to assist you. Um, and so, but my suggestion would be to have another meeting in February of all boards to discuss uh, the bylaws and discuss the process. We will have more legal, legal language for you, so there'll be more specificity. Um, and then we are here to uh, serve your needs. Thank you. Uh, if there's not any further questions or discussions on this topic, uh, we'll move on to the overview of the Vermont Open Meeting Laws and Best Practices. Do we want to try Sorry, to Chris, do we, can, can oh. we do the con plan? Yeah, that, we got to circle back. Yeah, let's do the con plan. Thanks for the reminder there, Ryan. Rebecca, are you available? I am. Thanks, Bosco. Thanks all um, for letting me join you for a couple <clears> minutes. Um, I'm going to do a pretty quick presentation. It's going to take more than a couple of 
minutes, and um, so then we'll have an opportunity to get some feedback and thought from you all um, one second while I set up the screen share. Housing. 
in terms of a priority for Burlington. We're gonna get back so I can see you all. That was pretty quick, eh? <laughs> Um, so, my intention of meeting with you is to give you a heads up that we're doing this, that we're engaged in it. Um, either myself or Hostler or Scott will be presenting at the individual NPA meetings in February, um, possibly late January, but I think mostly in February. Uh, but did want to hold just a couple minutes. I know you all are um, we're running a little behind on the agenda, but. Uh, just to see if you had any immediate reactions or thoughts around what our priorities for Burlington, where our our greatest needs, and then secondary to that, if you know of either um, a group that you represent or that you feel uh, we might have missed or not be aware of in the city that you want to make sure that we're connecting with directly and asking for um, feedback and input on what our priorities for uh, the city. And I don't know if I was that explicit about it, but basically the, the needs assessment we do and the um, feedback we receive from folks will dictate and direct how we expend the funds that we receive through the federal government, as well as how we prioritize our, um, our efforts, our time, as uh, Thanks so much. Um, just a couple thoughts. One is that it's mid-January at this point. Either wards have held their January meetings or have planned their agendas. We also have a big election coming up in March, so the February meeting is out for a lot of folks. Um, we, I don't want to speak for the NPA, other folks here, but agree. we generally need a little bit more warning yes. than this to get this onto an agenda. Um, and in, in the spirit of actually giving people time to plan to come to an NPA and give their feedback, we really need time. Um, so just want to, like, I don't know if we can get this on the agenda in Ward 5 before February 12th. Um, I think it's incredibly unlikely because our meeting is tomorrow. Um, so just want to have full disclosure about that. Um, and if you haven't chatted with folks at Burlington Housing Authority buildings, I'm sure they would really love to share their experiences. They have been tremendously neglected um, by all of the entities that should be paying attention to them um, and are really feeling a lot of the struggle that I'm sure you're seeing elsewhere. Uh, any other comments? Right. Uh, quick question. Um, this is more specific to the grants themselves. Can they go only towards new housing projects or can they go to like permit or zoning reform or anything like that? That's a great question. Um, I will own, I don't have a lot of expertise. I've been in my role for a couple months, so gaining and growing in that regard, as well as I've inherited what is happening to date versus what plans are for moving forward. So I could look into that. My general impression is that the intention is less towards, um, you know, internal funding, right, for um, sure. things, and yet in as much as the funds maybe don't need to go there, as much as the community can identify barriers to um, housing. So I think maybe if I'm inferring what your asking is that it's not just about building housing, it's also about how um, how are we using the housing we have, what is the parameters around gaining housing or creatively changing up our existing resources and such. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, if I may, um, and Lena, that, that's a good point, and I'm, I'm wondering, Rebecca, if um, maybe we, if we don't do a presentation, what we can do is we can be there to hand some handouts out at the beginning that people can take home and fill the survey out on their own time. I do know at one point we had some handouts with some physical dots. Maybe we can hand those out at the meeting and people at their leisure can uh, uh, put their inputs in and then we can get that data back to you, Rebecca. Yeah, definitely. And we are um, communicating the survey on Front Porch Forum. Thank you. I mean, that is helpful to know around the timeline. Uh, waiting until March makes it a little tight for us for our reporting timeline, but I think that's another thing. If you have an NPA that is really engaged or would want to weigh in and just, again, to acknowledge that the timeline is too tight to get in a space for feedback in February, we could still collect feedback in March. Thank you, Rebecca. Any further comments or questions on this topic? All right. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, we'll be moving Thanks, on. Y'all. To the uh, overview of the Vermont Open Meeting Law and best practices, and that'll be Fosca and Scott. I think just quickly, maybe going over that, is that all right, you think? Yeah, um, we'll just, you know, we didn't really have a major presentation plan for this. Um, 
and I know with timing, you know, maybe we can, we'll just take a brief look into this. Um, you know, we do have a link to the Vermont Secretary of State's guidelines, um, which does contain um, an exhaustive explanation of open meeting laws. I know there has been a, a, a summary of open meeting laws discussed previously. Um, we're certainly um, happy to try to answer any questions tonight if people have them. Um, you know, a big rule of thumb for me um, so that um, uh, an MPA doesn't cross the line. If you have real questions about whether something violates uh, an open meeting law, stop, um, delay it, ask for feedback. We can speak, certainly speak with the city attorney's office if we can't answer that. Um, but with that, if there's just any, any basic questions about uh, open meeting law, we're happy to uh, address those. Yeah, and, and before we end this, I'm just going to add one or two other things about when we'll need to receive agendas and meeting minutes to comply with Vermont Open Meeting Law, but if there's any questions before that, we can answer those. There's a hand up on the screen. Dale, do you have your hand up? Would you like Thanks, to speak? Yeah, I have a question, which is um, whether the Open Meeting Law applies to um, our steering committee meetings as well as to our actual NPA meetings. Yes, yeah, so from my understanding, as long as you do not go into anything substantive that is planned to be on the agenda during your steering committee mem meeting, then it does not need to follow open meeting requirements. Um, again, that means that your steering committee meeting is namely solely for the purpose of planning the next meeting, putting agenda items on, but that you shouldn't be engaging in any large debate or discussion about those items that would be, you know, about their content. That would be the business of the body of the NPA. So, for example, um, at our last steering committee meeting, we talked quite a bit about how to update our bylaws. Um, and we talked about what we would want to bring to the NPA to discuss. You know, we have like, Ward 6 has bylaws that were adopted, I don't know when, that are in existence right now, and we talked about whether we should just use those and amend them, or whether we should start fresh with the sample that um, CETO had provided. We did not post that as an open meeting. It was, you know, three of us on a Zoom. Um, I'm wondering if that should have somehow been posted, and if so, I don't think I have any idea how we would have done that. Uh, uh, thank you, Dale. Um, yeah, this is one of those ones where it is, it, it's tough, and, it, and the MPAs are, are kind of a unique situation. I would say that that type of discussion should be held at an open board meeting um, where you're starting getting to some of those substantive decisions. Um, you know, it, it's, it, you know we, and we can help you with this. You, you can warn a steering committee meeting if you would like, and, and, and just as long as the public is warned and is able to attend that meeting, um, you could do that as well. But I, I would... For, for these steering committee meetings that, are, that, are, that are, are not warned, I think the best policy would say we are going to discuss changes to our, our bylaws at the next meeting and then leave the discussion at that, like yes or no, um, would be probably the best uh, course of action. Can I ask a question that builds off of that, what Dale had mentioned? Because I, one thing that I feel is that we as a steering committee have an obligation to facilitate the MPA meeting efficiently. Um, and it, with the bylaws specifically, I know that we had a similar conversation and we felt that the best way to facilitate the conversation is we had to plan a little bit of what our proposed changes were and how we would talk about it. So to the point, there there was some discussion, but it was to not to stop discussion at the MPA meeting. It was rather to ensure we were facilitating and introducing discussion from the MPAs, because I feel that if we come kind of unprepared to talk about it as a steering committee, that doesn't really open the floor for a great conversation from the MPA as a whole. I agree. So I don't, I don't, I don't super have a question there. I just wanted to kind of highlight that is, it, it, you know, complicates the gray area a little bit. That's exactly the situation we were in, Lauren. Thanks for describing it so well. <laughs> you, you, you're welcome. Thanks. Um, 
Sure, sure. Let, let's uh, we'll get some clarification here. Yeah. Uh, Eric Ramakrishnan from the city attorney's office. Um, the I guess what I'll say is if you're going beyond just agenda setting, uh, your meeting should be warned and you can't take any action on something that wasn't warned. So uh, you can, it's not to say you can't discuss, if it was a warned meeting, it's not to say you can't discuss substantive items, but you can't take action on substantive items unless it was warned. So if you think you might talk about substantive things at your steering committee meeting, just warn the meeting. And if you didn't warn an issue, don't take action on it. Does that make sense? Could you, could you just define those two terms? I, you, you I'm, still, I'm just a little bit unclear about how we can efficiently set an agenda if we can't discuss some of the matters a little bit to what does understand mean? how we will okay. talk about them. What does action mean? So the safest course is just to warn your steering committee meetings. But, but the, all three of you have used those words, and I don't think we have a clear definition. Okay. Please. So the warning is you, you post the agenda on. It's what do the words mean? Substantive. substantive action. What do those words mean? Okay. Um, so for, for an NPA. Substantive is you're going beyond just setting the agenda. Uh, setting the agenda, the, the, the public meeting law specifically says you can do other than at a warrant meeting. If you're doing anything beyond setting an agenda, it's substantive. Does that answer your question? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure. So we have a I, I, I'm sorry. So we had a situation where we wanted to discuss the MOU with UVM uh, that is being discussed right now across the way. Um, we had to have a conversation as to whether we wanted to invite UVM or not. Is that substantive? It's the, the agenda item is com, uh, conversation with, with, uh, the, with the city planners and CEDO about, um, about the MOU. The, the city planner and, and, and CETO said, do you want to invite the university to attend? Does that become substantive? I, I would say it probably quickly becomes substantive. So if, 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 do we want to invite UVM? Yes or no? Okay, great. But that discussion is almost inevitably going to cut, cut to the merits, right? And then it's become substantive, so. Okay, cutting to the merits. Yes, the yes, yes. Um, and, and, and taking action is taking a vote that has some practical impact on it, so. All right, we'll go with uh, Sam, followed by Ryan. Um, I know at the last All Wards meeting, we discussed a kind of the responsibility of MPAs and the steering committee and what that relationship to the city looks like. And I think this is a continuous confusion, at least for me, and maybe this is just because I'm new to my position, um, but I feel like this just gives us a party hat and it's just like, bring presenters to your neighborhoods, have people present, and then that's kind of all we would be doing as steering committee members versus, yeah, how Jonathan was saying, we had this, we had a discussion on if we wanted UVM to be there or not, and especially for Ward 1, um, that is a very sensitive thing, and I have gotten that, and I've been lucky enough to get the history of what the relationship of Ward 1 and UVM is, and what that city relationship is as well, and I think it's, yeah, I think kind of pertaining to what Jonathan was saying, there should maybe be a, a different definition of what substantive it is because I feel like that clouds what steering com committee members are even allowed to do for their for their wards and I feel like and maybe that's just me um yeah yeah I I'm loathe to belabor the point but it strikes me that just setting an agenda would be in and of itself substantive like you know let's say i really am in favor of this park and we have a crowded meeting next meeting and i'm going to really argue and debate to get this park on the agenda um and like that's just in of itself setting the agenda but now it's become this whole debate and so i don't or maybe i don't like a project and i'm like oh we can push that to next month yeah. so even the setting of the agenda i mean it just strikes me that we should warn steering committee meetings but then that becomes quite cumbersome it would be the 
best practice, certainly. Sure. To just do it. Yeah. And on the same token, if the NPA is really just a receptacle for city agencies to come and check the box of public engagement, <laughs> then what is the point of having a steering committee at all? Thank you. I just, yeah. this is, it's, if we're going to have community meetings that are independent from the city structure, then we should have community meetings that are light enough and not bureaucratic so that we can actually do the thing that we're here to do. If, like, the closer we get to this requiring the threshold of, of XYZ qualification to, to meet standards, can the please less... please speak into the microphone? Oh, sure. Sorry about that. Just the, the closer we get to needing... To, to warn the steering committee meeting, which I'll speak for myself, is already really hard to plan. Like, are we inviting people to these meetings? I don't think people want to come to these meetings. That's why they're not on the steering committee. Like, <laughs> we, creating structures that aren't helpful isn't actually furthering democracy. It's just wasting people's time. And the last thing I want to do is waste people's time because I want them to come to my NPA. So I, I just, I'm struggling to understand, like, what is the goal here? Is the goal transparency? Because I think we can achieve that without making a million rules for how we actually run the meetings and make the agendas and decide how the NPAs are, are run. And like, if we're so sensitive to individual NPA culture that we're worried about having the same bylaws, like, why? Are, wh how are we getting tangled in this for agendas, which is, are so much more related to the stuff of the meeting than the bylaws? It just feels like the standard is not, uni not uniformly applied. And I feel the more we talk about this, the less I understand how to conduct myself as a steering committee member. Um, I'm going to, before I move on to Lauren online, I'm going to defer to Charlie Giannone here, uh, former Ward 3 steering committee member. OK. So I think it would be helpful <clears throat> if the city were to say, why is this suddenly an issue with the city? The last time the city brought this up was about 12 years ago when Gene Bergman from the city attorney's office came to, the, came to an all wards meeting and said it was crucial for the MPAs to follow the open meeting law, okay? Which later I spoke to Deb Markowitz, the uh, Secretary of State, and she kind of laughed, frankly. But um, so it would be helpful if the city were to tell us what has happened to suddenly rise this to the level of needing to be seriously addressed at the NPAs at this time. Thank you. Uh, anybody from the city want to respond to that? Mr. Attorney? It's on the agenda and I was asked a question and I answered the question based on my understanding of state law. That's really all I can say in response to that question. Uh, I think we saw Lauren, now I'm seeing Jess. Uh, uh, before few hands. Carmen has been raising her hand okay. online, so I just want to, I, I, I have I, a question, but Carmen vision's is kind of bad. much longer than me. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll go with Carmen then. Sorry about that. My vision's kind of bad. It's okay. I don't know Charlie. how to make that little hand thing up here. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, one thing that I asked um, about was, I asked about subcommittees, because I want to have, and, and this relates to what you're, what you're all discussing here, is because I want to have a committee of people who work on the meals. But I'm told that we would have to have Channel 17 <laughs> attend a subcommittee on meal preparation selection, which seems a little, I don't think that's real. <laughs> and I'm bringing it up because I'm questioning it. Um, so I think subcommittees can be utilized, they can be warned with an agenda, like I can say, this is what we're going to discuss, the public is welcome to come and cook with us if they would like, or discuss the agenda, the other meal, but I don't, uh, being told that Channel 17 has to attend every subcommittee was a little bit shocking to me, so I would appreciate the, if you would tell me if that's true. Um, Carmen, I, I'm not sure, maybe we misunderstood each other, but I think when you were talking about subcommittees, I understood it in the context of subcommittees working on bylaws um, and other aspects that are business of the public body. Um, so I think in that sense, those meetings would need to be warned because they would need to follow open meeting law. But I don't uh, know that... I have no problem with them being warned, but being told that 
Channel 17 has to attend. A, so, if, even if we were a, a subcommittee to just work on bylaws, and it was open to the public, we properly warned it. I read the open meeting laws, and it doesn't say anything about Channel 17 attending. I think that has to do but with accessibility. I'm unsure. Maybe Scott can speak to this. <laughs> you know, for something as subcommittee, um, you know, Channel 17 wouldn't have to attend those. Um, really, they're there to promote the, you know, the main um, uh, MPA uh, uh, meetings. And so we're appreciative of that partnership. Um, you know, even here tonight, it wasn't necessarily um, mandated that this be recorded and televised. Um, I'm happy it is, but it, it wasn't mandated. So with the subcommittee, no, you, you don't need to have... Um, uh, channel, uh, well, CCTV, or you know, to be there as well. So, um, don't worry about that. But I, again, I, I will, I will sort of, you know, um, go on with the city, the city attorney's office is advising to us. Um, probably best practice is to warn your steering committee meetings. Um, I, I'll go with say with Lena. I don't think there's a lot of people who really want to attend, so I don't expect you'll get a full house. But at least you'll know you protected yourself, which is good. So we're going to go with Lauren. And I think it looked like Erica and then Molly, or did I get the two of you backwards? I have a short question. All right, Lauren, you're up. I, I also have a short question. I know I've talked a lot. Uh, my, my question, I guess, is I agree with what everyone has said, and I kind of, my hesitation here is we are voted on as steering committee members. We go in front of our boards and our MPAs and ask them to vote us on, and they are voting us with the responsibility that we are steering what is on the agenda. Uh, and to the point of, you know, people probably want to type fine, but it, it, I just, I view some of this as fundamentally changing what the steering committee is doing. And that is something, if that is going to happen, if the city is telling us we must do this to comply with open meeting law, fine. I, this is just far too gray and fuzzy for me to feel comfortable with. If, how we act going forward um so i just wanted to say that and since lauren added on to my comment last time i'm just going to say <laughs> likewise we've had lots of steering committee meetings in my living room yes and when you talk about the bylaws kind of reflecting the ethos of each individual mpa i'm not having a publicly warmed open to the public meeting in my living room so it would change how we meet significantly if we ever wanted to meet in person we'd have to find a place to do that and that's kind of a big pain mm -hmm. we, we can go. try to get some clarity on everything you've all been bringing up and <laughs> get back to you about it um yeah thank you for all the sh issues you're raising hi everyone i'm erica faulkner i use she her pronouns i came a little late sorry um and i'm with ward two on decatur street um, I guess I just had a couple questions. I was unable to attend last All Words just because they were kind of announced last minute um, and I had flights booked that day. So I'm wondering if you guys could tell me how long should we be warding or um, warning the meetings? 48 hours. 48 hours, okay. Interesting. And my, my question was just what is the definition of warning? Thank you. Like, yeah. What is yes. the yeah. process that, that you mean when you say that? Typically, you could share the agenda with staff and they could post it online. That's the primary way that the meeting is warned. Um, you're supposed to technically post the agenda at the location where the meeting will be held and to other places nearby. So um, I'm on my town's planning commission and if I post an agenda, the laundry Matt is open 24 hours a day and there's a bulletin board there. That's one of my two places. The post office is another one. Um, that, that's, that counts, if that makes some sense. Um, I had one other question off of your definition. If we're meeting to set an agenda, how do we have an agenda to give <laughs> them? Like that's just like yes. logistically, I just don't understand. Sorry, I'm not trying to be finicky at all, I promise. I'm just, yeah. And again, I mean, if you are purely setting agenda, the agenda okay. and you're not venturing into substantive issues, then it does not have to be warned. It's just that it would be a best practice if you think that the conversation is going to become substantive. 
I, I'm, I'm recommending as a best practice that you should warn to protect yourself. And then also, I, I'll, I'll think my question through a little bit more actually. Any further, uh, Sam? I just wanted to make a comment on to both of you guys. Um, I, obviously the whole idea of going into our steering committee meeting to set an agenda is to just set the agenda, but I think that a lot of, I'm just speaking for our ward, but a lot of it is spontaneous. The con conversations that we have are spontaneous, so there's really no way that we could warn something that we don't know is actually gonna happen. Um, I, that just is confusing to me. And I appreciate that. I, I, I didn't write the law. Yeah. I just wanna be clear about that. <laughs> um, and, and, and that's why I'm just saying as a best practice, my recommendation to you, and I understand it may be more complicated than I'm imagining, but my recommendation to you would be if you warn it, then you've covered yourself. Uh, Jessica and then Molly. Oh, actually, Molly, Molly had her hand up earlier. No, I already said my first um, A couple questions. So we, on our NPA website, we post steering committee meetings. Uh, the steering committee meets on the last Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. Yeah. Is that sufficient to have it publicly posted in that way? I guess there would need to be information about where, but is, is that sufficient? It, and you should identify what's going to be on the agenda. And if the standing agenda item is to set the agenda for the next meeting, I think that's fine. Um, that doesn't give you permission to take action on a different topic, but it gives you you know, you've invited the public into the conversation. Thank you. And are there examples of other groups um, <coughs> that are affiliated with the city or not that would not fall under um, this type of open meeting laws for something like a, a steering committee meeting? I'm just wondering if there's, a, if there's another way to define the NPA steering committees to make it possible to have the type of planning conversations and other discussions that ha that happen more um, spontaneously at steering committee meetings without having to have, have a warned agenda listing them first. I mean, off the top of my head, I, I don't have any feedback on that. I apologize. Okay, I was just, just asking. And, and we really, and we understand that it's your job to tell us what the rules are, yeah. and it's our job to decide whether to follow them or not. <laughs> 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 we get that. Lena. Thank you. Keep it short, I promise. I just want to say from an equity perspective, the more this gets mm -hmm. burdensome, the harder it is for people to do. Um, all due respect, I'm not retired. Um, and I, you know, I know that a lot of people who are on the steering committees of their NPAs are, are able to give a lot of time, which is amazing, and a lot of people are not. Um, and the more we make this a challenging thing to do well from the perspective of rule following, in addition to the perspective of community building, the less we are inviting people of diverse identities and economic situations to actually participate. And that I think is to the detriment of the NPA and the detriment of our community. So just like wanna encourage, it's, it's been really unclear to me over the course of this conversation, like what are we protecting ourselves from? And like, I'm a volunteer, like, what are you gonna do to me if I like don't warn my media? Like, it just, it doesn't feel like we're, we're having this conversation seated in a reality that we are all living in. And I, I'm gonna have a lot less trouble following the rules if I understand why they exist. Uh, I, I think everything everyone's bringing up is, you know, really important and I would urge you too to to bring these up these conversations and these thoughts up to your city councilors because the NPAs were formed through a city council resolution, right? The city council also um, passed the resolution that is now prompting all this bylaw work. There's only so much we can do, right, to like follow what they have um, required of the NPAs. But I think it's a really important question, right? Like, you know. Having become having formed as kind of a, an entity related to the city, a commission, I believe, um, it complicates things. I think, but I think what you're bringing up is a really important point. And I'm sure your city councilors would be interested to hear. Right. Uh, I guess 
how does the planning commission, the development review board, how do they set their agendas? How does the council, for that matter, set their agenda? Um, you know, if we decided that setting an agenda is cause for public meeting law to be invoked, you know, there's a ton of meetings upstairs that happen all the time, and I haven't been warned about any of their agenda setting meetings. Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't require a response. It just, you know, they're, well, they're not accomplishing much upstairs, but, you know, it's a separate <laughs> issue. <laughs> they can set an agenda, at least. Um, yeah, it, it's tough. And, and I suspect, you know, they're following the advice of, of the city attorney, and they're keeping it to specific dis discussions of what's going to be on the agenda. People, you know, certainly at planning commission le level, you get a lot of training on, on pu open and public meeting laws. Yeah. I've been on... Could we get that same advice? I think, I think that's yeah. a good... That's, I think that's what we're going to try to do here and, and get some more training. There's some really good information on the uh, Secretary of State site. Um, you know, I've been on appointed boards before as well. And, um, you know, in, in the case of one of them, we were advised, it was a housing board, like not to discuss housing. Yeah. With anybody outside, you know, outside of, of even who was on the committee. So, um, and that's just what, what we did. So, um, you know, you, you can keep it just to the agenda. And I mean, it is hard because you're going to well, want but, to talk I about guess, other things. Sorry, not to engage in a back and forth, but like if you're putting things on or setting the, even the order of the agenda, you know, you know, if it's a long meeting, you could put something at 1130 if you want it to get knocked off. Mm -hmm. Like the setting of the agenda. I mean, if you're really not discussing anything, then it can just be an email. You know what I mean? Like, well, if you're not allowed to discuss anything, then, like, here's somebody dreams it up, here's the agenda, and there's no debate over it. So, sorry, yeah, not to. Oh, no, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Any further questions? Uh, it looks like, Hank, you have a discussion or a question, comment? Yeah. Um, I find this whole uh, meeting to be really demoralizing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> brand new, and I don't know the history of the conflicts that have led to the, 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 the city's perceived need to uh, bind everybody by, by some very, very specific and rigid practices, policies, and, and procedures. Um, but it, 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 it just, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not the kind of um, jumping into community affairs that I was hoping to be doing by, by joining the MPA. And um, if, it, if it becomes just a bureaucratic morass, um, I'm not interested. But uh, it, it's just hard to hear how, how far it's gone to, uh, we, we're in a, you know, an exceedingly <laughs> litigious society, but um, you know, the, 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 the idea, the spirit of the NPA that I understand from reading about its history uh, is exactly the opposite of that. This is not about, you know, how, how can I screw my neighbor best? You know, it's about how can I know my neighbor better? And uh, the, the rigidity and the, the requirements uh, don't add to that. They, they detract from it. Just my feeling. Sarah? Yeah, I just wanted to speak to, I guess, the way I'm understanding or trying to, to get a sense of in terms of this agenda setting as, you know, what we'll do as in our own steering committee meeting. And um, it's bringing up the game yet. I don't know if everyone's familiar with that, but you only get to ask yes or no questions. And I don't know if that is how kind of the rule is is supposed to be followed um, in terms of setting the agenda. And of course, that's kind of the the baseline. There's oh, there's always going to be a little bit of conversation. I you know I guess when you make rules, you expect that some of them will be bent, maybe not completely broken, but we obviously have to conversate a little bit to be able to be on the same page. And I think more brought up, you know, we are steering the agenda. Um, but would that kind of, does that sound correct in terms of being able to follow the rules? And when we're having our steering committee meeting, um, you know, sort of keeping it to yes or no questions, 
as the as a baseline. Yeah, I, I mean, the bottom line is, and the reason I keep using the term best practice is we're getting into sort of legal gray areas here. There aren't always clear yes or no answers to some of these legal questions. And I just want to be clear, the city isn't trying to impose some new bureaucratic rules on you. The question was asked under state open meeting law, somebody said, do we have to warn our meetings if we're going to get into substantive discussions of the issues? And if you're going to get into substantive discussions of the issues, then I would say, yes, the best practice uh, to make sure you're coloring within the lines is, is to warn the meetings. But I, I'm not trying to impose a new rule on you. I'm not proposing to police you. Um, I'm just answering the question that was posed to comply with state open meeting law. Have any other questions on this going? Um, I just wanted to say that this has been a very robust discussion here, and I. Mark Hughes. Uh, I'm sorry, Mark. <clears throat> Mark, are you there? I am. Thank you. I I just wanted to, um, you know, just chime in real quick on on this because it's it's so entertaining to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to you know hold myself back from it. Um, and really just to, um, just to applaud the folks that are uh, pushing back um, a little bit, you know, just, in, just really just seeking understanding. You know, this, these, these public meeting laws, you know, in my opinion uh, and with my experience, you know, they, they are, um, you know, colonial, um, colonialism. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really, you know, it comes from patriarchy. Comes from uh, racism. It's 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 baked into uh, the system, uh, and I just qualify racism with systemic. Uh, and uh, you know, and these are these are challenges that that we we're wrestling with. And I'm I'm you know on committees. I've served on the police commission. I've served and I'm serving on the health equity advisory commission as the co-chair right now at the statewide level. And and, so there's, and, and I just appreciate so much the pushback. Uh, that I'm here, and especially, uh, particularly, for, particularly for folks who have maybe haven't um, had these experiences before. You know, there are many examples. I mean, you know, uh, executive session. Uh, you know, it, and it just goes all the way down the list. It's just all the, any way that you can exclude people or make it difficult. You know, public hearing. You know, let me talk to you for two minutes, just two minutes, uh, and I'm not going to respond. Uh, so there's all kinds of different ways. Um, that um, we have to navigate, and you know, in, in some ways, you know, you know, using the same process. I think sometimes these, some of these rules, and I'm no lawyer, and the city has plenty of them. Um, but sometimes you you can go in and, and actually vote to um, to actually um, either um, uh, like supersede or or to circumvent, or I guess the word I'm looking for is, is to suspend, if you will. Uh, any or all of them as a democratic body. Um, and there's just ways to get around it, I guess is what I'm saying. And, and, and I'm not trying to lecture anybody or anything like that. I just wanted to really express just a deep appreciation for the pushback uh, that I'm hearing. Uh, because, you know, for you know, so often, and for so long, we've seen so many people just, you know, as lemmings just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just go along with the program without giving it any thought, with about, you know, thinking about how many people are actually being excluded from the process, or how difficult it makes it for many people to participate uh, in the process. So I'm 100% I'm um, with uh, the folks who have expressed concern, and I, I hope that this, um, that our, uh, I, oh, by the way, I'm with Ward 1. I, I hope our folks continue to, to, um, to struggle uh, to, and to um, push back and to, and to question authority and to, um, and to challenge uh, when it doesn't make sense, particularly for your constituents. So thank you. Thank you, Reverend Hughes. Um, yeah, as I was saying, I think that we've had a very robust discussion. It was very encouraging to me personally. I think that what we saw here tonight is really evokes the spirit and intent of what the MPAs are designed to be, and I'm glad that we were able to ha have this discussion. Uh, seeing all the different points and all the potential challenges that 
their writing was, I think very clearly illustrates the point of why Ward 3 has taken the position that we are an unincorporated association of private individuals. Um, but based on the discussion that we've heard tonight, it would appear that the city is still taking the position that we are uh, a part of the city government. And I think that a plain uh, reading of the resolution would suggest otherwise. So I guess the question I would have for our city attorney is, what is the legal basis upon which the city is making a claim that the MPAs are in fact a part of the city government under the CETO umbrella? And I'm asking this because if uh, the MPAs are, uh, do fall under that, then yes, they do need to follow the open meeting law. But if they are an unincorporated association of private individuals, the open meeting law would not apply. But I would hope that as a community organization, they would certainly adopt those principles of transparency and do their best to comply. But I'm just kind of curious upon what the legal basis is for the city's uh, claim here. So I feel like I'm perceiving that this feels like a little bit of a debate between y'all and me, and I didn't mean for it to become that. Um, my goal was just to give my best legal answer to a legal question that was posed. Um, and so if uh, I just want to say that to begin. Um, but I guess just very briefly, and I don't want to go much further into this because I'm not trying to debate anyone here. Uh, the NPAs were created by city council action, and that's the bottom line here. Um, and, and I'll just leave it at that. I appreciate the answer. I'm just going to simply say that the city as a whole is seems to be taking this position now this is now the second meeting in a row where we've had a representative from the city's attorney's office who has not been able to speak to this so that kind of suggests to me that the city is not really prepared so if we're going to continue to have this debate i would ask that the city come prepared to answer these questions the next time because otherwise we're just going to be going around and round in circles <clears throat> Chris, thank you for that. And and I'll speak with my leadership at CEDO and, and, you know, maybe we can have something more clarification. You know, under, our understanding, our role here at CEDO and our role as staff is simply to support the MPAs. Um, um, you know, we, we, in essence, we work for you and it shouldn't be looked at as, as, as any other way. Um, but certainly I think we can work to get a clarification of, of, of the city. And this is something that certainly you can talk to uh, more uh, <clears throat> more openly with your elected officials. Thank you, Scott. Um, so I think we've had a robust discussion. We can move on to the next agenda item, which is NPA expectations of the city council <laughs> administration. Uh, you know, I kind of feel like these two topics have bled together, so I'd like to make a motion to, uh, you know, skip over this since they're kind of together in the instance of time. Um, I'll actually, I'll, as the chair, I probably shouldn't make the motion, so I'll ask for a motion. Uh, motion to move on to mayoral candidate forum update. No. Okay. Else else okay. Here. So. All right. Oh, right. There's a oh, resolution. The, oh, Sorry. My, 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 yeah. I didn't realize that this was the item uh, attached to the resolution. So. Uh, uh, um, so I think the resolution uh, is included in the packet. I know that it came out of Ward 1 originally. Uh, we took the ball and ran one of that at Wards 2 and 3 and also adopted it, uh, I think, verbatim. Um, and uh, I would uh, now defer to the folks from Ward 1 to speak to that as the originator of the resolution. <clears throat> okay, thank you, and I'll be quick. Um, um, I crafted a lot of this, Lena crafted a lot of it. Um, to, for, for clarity, what this is, is it's, it's, a, um, it's a piece of writing <clears throat> to be submitted to the city council for them to do something with. They can, cr they can rewrite it. They can, it's not our, it's not a resolution really from the NPA. It's a proposal that the city council make a resolution to do this. Um, and specifically, it, based, on the, based on the founding document to the NPAs, the, um, the proposal is in this resolution that the city council and NPAs in some form uh, meet to establish some processes and criteria for determining the municipal issues on which NPAs must be consulted for advice and input prior to city council votes. And I think the, the, this was motivated, this has been a conversation for a while, but it was motivated to begin with by what motivated a lot of this conversation was that 
that uh, many, many NPA members, steering committee members and residents had no idea that the city council was voting on something that directly affected the operations of the NPAs. Um, and, it, and, and more often, decisions get made at, N, at city council meetings that NPAs don't have any input to. The NPAs were created for the purpose of, of providing input to the city council. Um, so really all this is is a, is a request that that some uh, that a process get put be put in place and, th and this is a city council resolution mind you it's not an MPA resolution but that the, that the city council with support from the NPAs puts a process in place to decide whether an issue is of, of uh, uh, is substantive enough that NPA should be consulted before the city council votes um, and this, we, we still have, we've talked about it three times at Ward 1, but we haven't gotten to a vote yet just because we've had more important things on the agenda. Um, but Ward 2, Ward 2, 3 did have a conversation about this, and there were a couple of comments. Jess, you had a comment that NPA isn't really uh, re totally re reflective, representative of the community. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Nevertheless, the city council established the NPAs for this reason. So the fact that we don't really represent the whole community is important, but it doesn't prevent this from going forward. What it, what it means is we have to do a better job of getting more people in. Um, and Milo, I think, had a comment about um, uh, the fact that even the city council isn't kept abreast of when decisions are being made. It's very hard to know. Uh, that too isn't really germane to this kind of a resolution. So I bring this forward. Um, and thank you, Lena, for updating the language a bit. <coughs> um, and I don't really know what, you know, I would propose, because this is, a, this is something that would, we would send to city council for them to do with what they will, it could be every, every NPA votes for it. It could be that the steering committee votes for it. It could be that one individual writes it and sends it to the, to the city council. It doesn't really matter. We just want to make sure that this is a way that the city council uh, get something that they can have some consideration about. So I'm wide open in terms of, uh, we, next month we will vote on this at War War. Um, I think it would be great if other, if other MPAs voted on it. If you don't, so be it. But it just, it just makes a louder voice when more, when more residents speak mm -hmm. on a subject. It's, it shouldn't be controversial. It's really very simple. It's, uh, is it, you know, the city council, we, we do this thing and, and actually, um, one of our city councilor candidates raised the point that even today there is a, there is a component to uh, city council uh, the ordinances that says that any development in a community has to come to the NPA uh, before it, go, it goes on with um, the planning, planning commission, one of the, one of the boards. Um, and that's great, but it's very limited uh, in terms of, of it. So there's the precedence of that. Uh, this is really just to, to decide what else besides those should come to NPAs. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm happy to answer questions or we can move on. Um, was this intended to be a discussion item or were we going to vote to adopt this resolution as an all wards? I would, I would be thrilled to vote on it as a resolution for all wards. I wouldn't demand it, but it would be great. It would just add a little bit more, um, a little bit more weight to it. If someone were to make a motion to adopt it, we could have a more substantive discussion. I will make a motion to adopt it. All right. Second. All right. We have a motion on the table to adopt the resolution uh, relating to the relationship between city officials and the neighborhood plan assemblies as introduced by Ward 1 and adopted by Ward 1, 2, and 3 NPAs. Uh, I yield the floor to Mr. Chapel Sokol, the sponsor of the resolution. We'll, ra we'll wave the reading too. <laughs> well, yes, we'll wa wave the reading too. Um, I've said my piece. All right, uh, going online, I don't know who popped their hand up first. Um, yeah. It looks like Dale, so. I think both Nancy and Carmen had their hands up before I did, just not electronically. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have no idea what this resolution is. I have not read it. I, I'm really sorry. I just can't vote. I've I would abstain from voting because I just don't know what it is. And I'm also wondering, if it was, we just went through a conversation about properly warning things. So, has it been warned that we can vote on this? Um, it's in the agenda. It's on the agenda. Uh, oh, it's the agenda to But not as a vote. Yeah, how do we assume? 
I, I can't um, speak to that. I'd have to. It, I, it I, seems like maybe we shouldn't vote on it because folks haven't received it, but we can still move it forward in our NPA. Does that seem like a fair assessment of what's going on? I would love to vote on it, but if people haven't read it, um, we should vote on it. Right now, we have a motion on the table to adopt. Um, if you are looking to dispose of it, we could. Chair would certainly entertain a motion to postpone or to table, to postpone I, I discussion. Withdraw my, uh, if you withdraw your second. I, I withdraw, withdraw my, my second. second. All right. All right. <coughs> motion has been withdrawn, uh, and uh, there will be no vote on this, nor will there be any discussion because there is not an active vote uh, motion on the table. Moving on. Well, I mean, I think we can still talk about it. If people have questions about the the origin of this and, and our concerns about it or your concerns about I, I mean, I think this is part of what this meeting is about. Um, so I, I just would be interested. Uh, I'm happy to entertain discussion. Typically, in a uh, under Robert's rules and parliamentary procedure, you have to have an active motion before you enter into discussion. But since we're moving in a little more informal today, uh, let's not make it any more cumbersome than it has to be. Parliamentarians absent today. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yes, if there are questions or discussions, it sounded like you may have some comments that you would like to share, Carol. No. Uh, anybody online have any questions or comments? I mean, I'd be happy to give like the 30-second digest. Um, the, what it's about is it's really about uh, trying to establish. Uh, it's it is honestly pretty straightforward once you get past all the italics and stuff. Um, <laughs> It's about trying to establish a set of guidelines for city council and for city administration um, about when an issue is, is, is important enough that NPAs should be consulted on it. And presumably that um, those guidelines would be written with the support of the NPAs, uh, but it would be a way for city council, for example, to look at a proposed vote and say, or a proposed resolution and say, um, does this meet does this meet the criteria that it should be th that we should get input from NPAs before we vote on it? That's the idea. Uh, it, it's you know it's just setting up some pr a process for uh, defining when NPAs should be consulted before votes are made at city council. And 90% of the votes, they could just say no. It's irrelevant. You just want to make sure that those, the ones that matter, actually get to the NPAs for conversation. Right. Uh, quick comment. I think it's great. Love it. Would support it if it was before us as for a vote. Uh, April 1st, 2024 is. Uh, that was just a snarky response to January 31st. That's <laughs> Excellent. It, 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 in that I case, that. great. Because I was like, there's no chance at all. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But again, this is for the this is for city council. Yeah, they yeah, can yeah. Have whatever date they want. Yeah. They often do. Chris, Molly has her hand up. Oh, Molly, sorry. Comment. Um, I, I appreciate the spirit behind all of it. And I would just, I guess I just, the thought bubble that arises in me is um, it just, if it goes forward with the council, we'll just have to be really careful about thinking through the ramifications of it. You know, there is a requirement for developers to come to MPAs for development in our neighborhood, which in the in broad strokes is great. However, in in my ward, we've gotten into a situation where we've, we've had to accept a developers being on the agenda, agenda multiple times because the project has had small to the public's eye in inconsequential adjustments, but it's triggered that city requirement and just has taken up time in our agenda where we didn't feel like we wanted to create that much time for this development, but felt like we had to given the requirement. Um, so just a warning that we should think it through how, how it actually comes into action so that it's using our time well. That makes per per perfect sense. Uh, looks like Lauren has a question online, as does Carmen. Uh, I, I was raising on behalf of Carmen. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> um, I think the point that was just made is a very good point because then you're telling the city. It sounds. I mean, I haven't read this resolution, so I have no idea. But it sounds like it's going to require charter change. It's going to require. It's going to end up mandating what's on our agenda. If, that's what you're talking about. So 
I am very cautious. I look forward to reading it, but um, that would be some of the reasons that I would not support it. I don't think it sh better not require a charter change. I don't think that this in so, any oh way <laughs> leaves the city in terms of um, requirements with the state um, or with our charter. I, I think this is really just an agreement between city council and NPAs as to what's important to them. It, 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 sh I, it shouldn't I, add anything that the NPAs wouldn't want added. I would just say that if you look at the committees of the city right now, they're advisory. And if you wanted to make them actually carry weight, you would have to have charter change. So I think that would be a good thing for you to just, just check out um, when you're working on it. It's just something to consider. Okay. I don't think that this, I don't think NPA has become any more than advisory from this. I don't think that changes it. I don't think it gives NPAs any more weight. All it does is it gets, it might get issues that ought to come to NPAs in front of NPAs. That's the goal anyways. Hank? I, I looked at the uh, agenda. What, was this resolution from what board one in the, in the agenda packet? Because I think as, as Carmen, I, I couldn't find it. Um, there were two items that linked Yes, to it is in the agenda documents. packet. Yeah, Hank, it's, it's, it's on page three of the agenda packet. Okay, let me go back to that. All right, thank you. I'll go of course. That. Any further questions? Uh, I just wanted to comment and say I think that the spirit and intent of the resolution is to promote a better understanding and working relationship with the city council and sitting down uh, with a couple of councillors may prove beneficial in that regard. So perhaps at a future all wards we may get, wish to consider to invite uh, some representatives from the council to, to have that conversation in the spirit of cooperation. All right, uh, moving on to... <clears throat> Moving on to the mayoral candidate forum, um, I was the one that I think brought that up uh, after speaking with Tom Derenthal from Order One and back in the November meeting. Uh, Tom and I have since spoken. Um, neither one of us really have the bandwidth at this point to kind of lead the charge on that, and there didn't seem to be a lot of, um, you know, enthusiasm to, for, to, to move that forward at, at the all awards level. Uh, speaking as an individual steering committee member, I think the intent from my bringing it up was recognizing that the mayoral candidates have a lot of events to attend to to begin with and expecting them to go to potentially six different NPA meetings may not be a reasonable uh, expectation or assumption. So the thought was if we had had, a, since the mayor's race is a citywide race, the thought was to have an all wards uh, meeting to uh, make it easier for the, for the candidates so that everyone could come and participate. But uh, unless there's you know, some folks here that want to take the ball and run with it tonight, I think that that ship has probably sailed at this point. Okay, it doesn't sound like we're going to have a mayoral debate at the all wards level. Moving on. Oh, may I ask a question? Yeah. I, I'm just curious to know which wards are, in the absence of an all wards mayoral debate, which wards are planning to have their own mayoral forum or, or debate as part of their February meetings? Is anyone planning to? I think they're, I think they're planning on having about, I heard six or seven different mayor debates already so i think mm -hmm. there was the first one's tonight the first one yeah. is tonight yeah. which we're so. missing <laughs> i know but i think they're live streaming it so yeah, yeah. we can always go back and watch but i think seeing that it feels less pertinent to have it happen here i'd rather focus on like putting our limited resources and energy into like city council races or ballot initiatives that don't seem to get enough coverage at least that's my thought process uh, I, I have a related question because um, we got an email from Will Emmons asking for time on an agenda as a mayoral candidate and I would love to get some guidance or other NPA steering committee members thoughts on how, how to best respond to a request like that from an individual candidate when other candidates haven't made that request or, or expressed interest. Jonathan? We, um, <clears throat> we very often, and, I, and this isn't specifically about mayoral candidates, but when this sort of thing happens, we very often invite them to come to speak out. 
and they get their two or three minutes at the beginning of the meeting to say whatever they want to say. Any further questions or discussions on this agenda item? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to the uh, next item, which is the owners of action items from the November uh, All Wards meeting. Uh, review the action items from the last meeting and assign owners to action item from those missing owners. Uh, Scott or Foscar, are you prepared to speak to that? I'm certainly not. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, this was a request I received from at least one steering committee member. Um, but basically, you can see in your agenda packet, page four, the bottom, those were the identified action items from the last meeting. Um, and I believe. Um, we had assigned some owners to those, but just want to review with everyone, you know, what the expectations are uh, for all those action items. And I don't know, Jonathan, if you have anything else you wanted to add to that. I, I yeah, I mean, I don't, I didn't recognize any, any owners after the last meeting, so it would be great to put names next to these. Definitely. Um, Do you want to take the lead or? <laughs> I can also. I, 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 I think I, I think maybe an end, a steering committee person with CEDO could do. This. Okay. Or maybe Rachel sh should be part of it because she took the, you know, she took the. I, I think Rachel was just there to facilitate. I think from now on, it, she's not going to necessarily be involved. Based yeah. upon the action just taken, I think we can safely remove the third from the bottom item to host a mayoral debate. Yeah. Anybody <laughs> pen? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'd be happy to get in touch if we want to just kind of go through these and see what makes sense. Um, I'd like to sit. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I say I'd like to suggest in process, maybe just start at the top and read down, have a brief discussion to go through this. Um, I think that the return to the all wards meeting is important. Clearly, we have some bigger issues that do need to be discussed uh, all wards at the city level. I think the question that really needs to be is how frequently do we want to have these meetings and when would we like to have the next one? So I'll open the floor up to discussion and questions about that topic. Jonathan? Just talking about everything. Uh, I'm wondering, and Carol, you're probably the better person to talk about this because you were involved, much more involved in the last round, but I'm just wondering whether there should be a representative from each w ward or each NPA gr group that would get together to work on <laughs> work on this sort of thing, work on planning the meetings, maybe doing some non-substantive agenda setting. <laughs> um, and just, but, but maybe it should be a, a a, um, a subset of the steering committees of just a rep from every ward to get together and kind of work through this sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, apply what I learned from the last meeting and repeat back what you had said as I understood it. Um, so it sounds like what I'm hearing perhaps is to create a steering committee for the all wards meeting for one from each person to address some of these or is that not your intent? Uh, that sounds great. Okay. I, I love the energy and I would be happy to help support that. I do want to hesitate against having it be so strict where it's, we need to have one person from each ward, just recognizing that some wards have only one member, other wards have like six or seven of us. So it might be a lot more effort for smaller wards um, to have like someone dedicated coming, whereas maybe a larger ward could maybe put up two people, obviously making sure it's still democratic and we're listening to that. But, you know, just making sure like wearing the burden evenly, and it's not falling onto smaller wards heavier. Um, we are at the end of the allotted time on the agenda, so we have a few more agenda items. I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules so that we can finish up with the last two or three items here. Motion. Okay. Uh, I'll second the motion. Thank you. All right. And can I suggest that we establish a new finish time and not, you know, just so we have an idea what we're we gonna do 15 minutes or 30 minutes? What, what am I signing for? Uh, we can, uh, if you'd like to make a motion, Hank, uh, whatever you feel would be an appropriate time frame, I think uh, would be open for consideration. Uh, I'll propose 15 minutes, 715. Second. All right. Anyone else want to propose a different number? Please go ahead. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, okay. So back to the action item discussion, uh, the return of the all wards MPA. Uh, meeting. It sounds like uh, there's some discussion to do in all wards steering committee. Uh, who is next in queue? I'm not seeing any hands. I don't see any. I guess Karen. I would just make a suggestion. I mean, in the past, what's happened is that I have met 
like with our CEDAW liaison and, and set up meetings um, and agendas with Sam um, and then solicited um, suggestions from people about agendas and then people came as they could. Uh, maybe what we if we can leave today with this item is maybe one or two people would be interested in volunteering to just take it the next step uh, for us um, rather than us trying to thrash out a process. I'll volunteer to help facilitate the all awards but I just would like to say that speaking as an individual I'd like to see it be because I don't want to be having a different time every month and you know same date same time consistency for planning just like the rest of the wards. Um, so for a point of information uh, to the folks in wards four and seven my understanding is that previously that board had been meeting on the fourth Wednesday and now I'm hearing that that may have changed to the first Wednesday is that a correct understanding? What is the standard meeting time for wards four and seven? The fourth Wednesday, fourth Wednesday. six to eight. Fourth Wednesday, okay. And uh, ward eight is now the fourth Thursday. Yeah, next week. My recollection when I last looked at the calendar, the first and third Wednesdays of the month are typically, uh, and so maybe the first Wednesday, well, I guess it'll be the third, I guess, right? Because the first one's gonna be next. We'll figure it out. Would you, would you be willing to? I would, however, my work, I actually coordinate um, a monthly uh, cocktail hour in Montpelier on the first Wednesday of every month, so I could not do a first Wednesday. But I would love to maybe send around a doodle poll and find a time so we don't have to spend this meeting discussing that. That works. Lovely. All right. Two of you will take it from here. All right, be in touch. Um, Defining the relationship with the MPA and the City of Burlington, I think that that's probably a larger conversation. I'd like to make the suggestion that perhaps, you know, at our next meeting we invite the councilors to come and we devote a portion of the a lion's share of the meeting to that discussion, perhaps. Any other thoughts on that? Okay. Um, next on the list is form an NPA bylaws and resolutions committee. Uh, we've already been provided with a set of samples from our folks at CEDO. Is this still something that folks feel the need to pursue, or do we just want to roll with the process as it's been uh, articulated thus far? Roll with the process. I think, think we've got enough tools. Right. I, I, Scott, Scott, I'm going to tell you several <coughs> items that will be forthcoming that will help us uh, focus <coughs> more on uh, what needs to be adjusted in the bylaws and what doesn't. Will do. Um, there was another, uh, the next item was to establish a communications group. If anyone has any thoughts that they'd like to share on that. Did we do that already? No. Is there a Google group? Oh, I didn't realize Just there was a Google group. We um, weren't, uh, I think boards two and three were not included in one of the larger Google groups until last week. So we yeah, might have missed a lot, a lot of communication. Of so I would prefer that. Uh, I think it would be better to have the individuals sub, uh, subscribe to that rather than the, mm. um, yeah. or in addition to. Um, well, I'll, I'll catch up on what's happening with the communication group. It is relevant to a topic that's later on the agenda that we I think we're probably going to bump because we're out of out of time. Um, so, I'll connect with the group. All right. So uh, sorry, is establish a communication group different from? utilize the all word steering committee google group because if we have the google group like i thought we were all on it and it seems like we weren't which means that it's not useful unless mm -hmm. we're all on it i think you're all on it know. now <laughs> so okay. should, like is is that the communication group oh i misunderstood i thought yeah. i thought it was a group a a subset of steering committee members mm -hmm. who are working as a team <coughs> to uh, talk about communications and outreach strategies. That's what I interpreted it as. That's what I also interpreted it yes. as. Great. <laughs> I don't know how I read that, but it seems like we could use that. Sounds like yeah. that's an agenda item for the next meeting. For next time. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would suggest that with respect to the all wards group, maybe at least one member from each ward be given access to that. So if people come and go, we can add them and avoid that. I don't know who's housing that or uh, overseeing the existing group, but. I believe Jason from Ward 5 created the group, um, but I believe he made me owner, so I could add Wards 2 and 3 to it because they weren't part of it. Um, but we can, I'm open to whatever you guys think about that. And there was also an earlier, there was another um, and, and all Wards NPA Google group that I think Sam created, and there's some documents on the drive, so I'd love for those things to be transferred so and 
delete the old one and go with the new yeah, one so um, just to make it a little easier. If anyone has a password and account info for that, that would oh. be helpful because oh. I can't enter it. Um, I that's why I created a new Google Drive, but if anyone can enter it or send me the files, like that would be great. Like a call to Sam. Somebody should have Sam's cell phone around, so we should be able to move. I'll give Sam a call. <clears throat> Uh, I think we've had a very substantive discussion tonight about aligning the non-discrimination policies with the city of Burlington, so I'm not sure that we need to have any further discussion. Okay. Uh, CEDO to call its Ward 4 and 7, Ward 8 meetings. It appears that that has been done. Uh, the developing of the grievance and data collection process, it sounds like we're waiting for some input from the city. Scott and Fosk are working on that, so we're good there. Uh, we did have a conversation about encouraging newly registered voters to join MPA. There was a suggestion, I think, that was made. Um, I do know that we have at least one steering committee member uh, here tonight that also moonlights on the board of the registration of voters. I don't know if said individual can speak to that. Yes, I can speak to that. <laughs> Um, so I reached out to uh, the city clerk, Sarah Montgomery, to ask about if this is something that we would be allowed to do. Um, so she was able to confirm, sorry, I'm just pulling up the email. Um, she says that she believes that it would be legally fine and she's looking to double check that. Um, there's not anything specifically called out in statute about sending out the letters that would say that it's not. Um, the only caveat, of course, is that they would like to have approval authority over what is being included with the um, registration letters. So um, it would basically, if we design a postcard, for instance, or something like that, we would share it with, <coughs> the, with the clerk's office, and they would say yes, no, and then that would get the ball rolling. So I'm happy, I think this kind of constitutes as further discussion because there's also the discussion about funding with this specifically, uh, but I'm happy to kind of be the owner and maybe if we have time in the next all wards, maybe it would be good to further discuss this in a little bit more detail. It sounds like this might be a good first agenda item for the uh, communication subcommittee once it has been established at the next group. Um, and then we've already dealt with the mayoral debate. Uh, we've already dealt with the Google group. Uh, Explores the possibility of hosting community events. That seems like a pretty open and wide ranging thing. So I will open the floor. Questions, comments, concerns? I think people, oh, Lena. I think this would be great. Oh, I'll move over here. I think this would be great. Um, and per your comment about how the NPAs don't necessarily reflect our communities um, is a reminder that the NPAs used to receive more funding mm -hmm. and it's really hard to put on events without funding. It's also really hard to provide food and childcare and transportation without funding. Um, and I, I think it's worth advocating for more funding because then we can do our thing that we're supposed to do better um, and that's important. So, I mean, if we wanna, if we wanna run events with no budget, power to us, but it seems like this is part of a, maybe a broader, broader effort to get some more material support from the city. Right. I would definitely urge, I would, I would voice that concern with the city councilors because I, I believe that that is up to their, um, their discretion. Yeah, it could require a resolution, but I wonder, I mean, we do get funding now and maybe expanding it or a matter of somebody talking to a city council or having a resolution. Um, one thing I'd love to propose, kind of similar to hosting events, but seeing if we could develop um, um, some tabling materials and get folks to maybe table at events. If every steering committee member wants to table at like one farmer's market a year, I think we could see a lot more like foot tra traffic and helping spreading the word about MPAs and what they are. Um, that's gonna require a lot of collaboration and discussion. Um, right now I'm a little at capacity with work, but in the summertime I would love to, you know, work on that with a couple folks if anyone's interested. I'm interested, so I'll work with you. All right, Jessica, I think you're up for the outreach comic. And oh, problem. sure, yeah, and this actually follows yeah. quite well from that. And I think 
Um, I, we don't have time to have a full discussion, but I wanted to give an update and then share some ideas. So as most, well, if the new folks might not, not even know about this, but um, last year as part of the wards two and three funding allocation, we used some of the money uh, to work with a local artist to create an outreach comic um, that talks all about the NPAs, why, why people can get involved, what you, what you can get out of them, how to find your NPA. And it was really intended to be an aspirational document that could get people interested and excited about the NPAs and to see the potential in them as well. And it's a lovely little little comic. It's about this this big, 12 pages, um, and connect and 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 then there there was also a poster made from the panels. The poster is a little less effective, I think, just because the font's really small and. It, I love the poster. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sweet, but you have to read it. Uh, yeah. but, the, the, and the, but the comic is amazing. And thanks mm -hmm. to CETO, it has been translated, uh, well, the text has been translated into nine different languages or seven? Oh, seven. Seven different wow. languages. So this is a really accessible outreach tool that um, right now we have in printed, printed form in English. We have in um, uh, both PDF and JPEGs for using online. Um, and then soon-ish, as soon as I have time, we will get the translated language into that document as well. So this is a really great tool that we can all be using to share excitement about the NPAs, so tabling at farmers markets and distributing. And so I think at our, maybe when this communications group is getting together, one of the things we can talk about is how, this, how these can be used, because there's a lot of energy and time and resources that were put into creating these documents, and we want to get them out into the world. But I really want to know how all the different MPAs want to receive that information. Like, are paper copies more efficient? Are dig digital copies that you can use on social media more useful? Um, how do you envision using the translated materials? And I think we could. there's a lot we can talk about to make sure that we're using this wonderful resource effectively, um, and also thinking about, well, how does it fit into other NPA branding? Like, we have these images that we can use. We don't have to use it just as a comic. We can use pieces of it for different things. Um, and just to help people recognize, you know, some brand recognition for the NPAs as well, um, keeping in mind that each NPA has its own, own, own culture and personality and different ways of doing outreach, but this is a shared tool that mm -hmm. we can use. Um, so I just wanted to let folks know what was going on with that project and to see if you had any immediate thoughts, um, and we can discuss it more next time. Looks like Hank does have a question online. Yeah, I just want to know, um, is it possible for you to send out an email to all the NPA members uh, with a copy of that, um, you know, a, a link to the comic, and that way we all know what, what we're talking about. That would just be a very Abs helpful thing. Absolutely, and that went out with a previous iteration of steering committee members, but that's a really good reminder that things like that need to go out off often because there are new, new steering committee members who join out. So I'll send that out through the new Google, uh, Google Groups email. Excellent. And the other question I had was, um, when we were, uh, again, this is from being very, very new, uh, we were told that there's a $2,500 um, amount uh, granted by the city council to each NPA each year. Um, and, and have people uh, had trouble staying within that? And, and, and is that what we're talking about, about needing more, more financial support from the city uh, to be able to have um, events. So just quickly, Hank, actually every ward gets 2,500, so it's four and seven. Hopefully you've got $5,000 um, to use. Um, and I think it makes sense to talk to our city councilors if we, if we want that to be increased. Um, we've struggled at different points about with spending it all, but now since we have to pay for our location of meeting, um, and food, that most of the money goes towards that. All right. Uh, any further discussions before we entertain a motion to adjourn? Just a couple things. The first thing, um, while we're talking about money for the MPAs, Ward 1 needs more money than any other ward because that's the only ward that has to pay for their meeting space. So $1,200 comes out of their 2500 just like that. Okay, so they need more support than any other MPA. That's at the Friends, friends That's the Friends Meeting House. house. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. The only other thing that I was going to add before Carol, just to get it in. 
So the best time to schedule all wards meetings or special ward meetings is if you look for the fifth Wednesday or the fifth Thursday of a month because they're all open and all the CETO staff and all the CCTV staff are available. So if you want to have future meetings, fifth Wednesdays and fifth Thursdays. Thank you. Carol? Um, just real quickly, um, we've talked about trusted community voices almost at every all wards meeting. Um, this is a leadership group among, um, as far as I know, Scott, among um, our new American folks, our neighbors. I think when we talk about outreach and we talk about expansion, we, we've talked about this a lot. Um, just translation services and outreach and meeting with trusted community voices, I, I'd once again like to just put that on the agenda. Uh, th thank you for bringing that up. I know we have talked about this and um, uh, we are currently working through the the work plan for the next six months for the trust community voices and there's some definitely some meeting dates open and i think we've talked possibly about having you carol and maybe um jess hyman come and present to the mpas um would this be something that the both of you would be amenable to and we can we can find a meeting date in the near future sure yep and there will probably be others too who could join but yeah present to yeah. Present to the trusted community voices folks about MPAs. Yeah, and certainly you can have discussions on who you would think would be the best representatives and to do that. I'll just simply say that as I look around here, <clears throat> I don't see uh, a lot of diversity in terms of what our community is. And I think using those funds to, uh, to engage with uh, communities and individuals that are not as well representative would be a very good use of, of those funds and I'd like to see us uh, move in that direction. Certainly speaking as an individual from Ward 3, we have a very strong interest in engaging with and bringing steering committees on from the King Maple neighborhood and folks from our, our, uh, our new American community. So just wanted to say that. Uh, thanks everyone for your time, for coming out. I think we had a very substantive, very robust discussion tonight. I appreciate all of you who attended online as well. Uh, we will get together and get this next meeting planned. And uh, without that, I'll entertain the motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Meeting adjourned at 7.20.